All right, guys, as always, pause the video and try to see if you can do the question first on your own. These are two kind of linked really to pharmacology, um, but concepts that you'll definitely see, obviously, on the step exam, especially the inducer inhibitor questions. So hope it's helpful, guys. All right, guys, it reads, which of the following would most likely explain the patient's symptoms? Is it A, ciprofloxacin levels increase due to warfarin's interaction? Is it B, ischemic stroke due to warfarin's levels decreasing? Is it C, hemorrhagic stroke due to increased levels of warfarin? Is it D, ischemic stroke due to ciprofloxacin? Or is it E, lower PTINR due to medication interaction? So it reads, a 55-year-old male with history of atrial fibrillation is brought to the emergency room after exhibiting stroke-like stroke symptoms. Patient's home medications include beta blocker, aspirin, and warfarin. The patient's wife, wife be, states he began slurring his speech soon after he had lunch at 11.30 a.m. She reports he was recently seen at an urgent care center for upper respiratory infection and prescribed ciprofloxacin. Which of the following most likely explain the patient's symptoms? So anyways, we got this guy um, who's basically having stroke-like symptoms, okay? He's already on warfarin, and he was given a, a new medication recently. This is kind of a classic, kind of a step one, step two, step three uh, uh, level question because they want to know if you understand how warfarin can be, imp can be impacted by introduction or basically introduction of new medications. That's classically how you'll see it. So in this situation, they were given ciprofloxacin. So we have to immediately know, is this an inducer? of the P450, or it, is it an inhibitor of the P450? And some of these have changed since I, since I kind of took it. So I'm just going to put down the little uh, acronym or whatever that I kind of learned it, and then you can kind of fill in the ones that, if anything, has, has changed. So for the inducers, meaning it revs up the uh, P450, meaning if I add an inducer medication to a medication that's affected by uh, the P450, that means it's going to metabolize it out quicker. It's going to induce the metabolism of it. And these are, this is your Queen Barb steals Fenfen and refuses greasy carbs continuously. Okay. So I'm just going to get rid of the Q because I know that, that one's changed. The B stands for barbiturates. Okay. S, St. John's wort. F, the phenytoin. R, rifampin. G, griseofulvin. And then uh, C, carbamazepine. Uh, and then an interesting carbamazepine can be the autoinducer. Uh, and then chronic uh, alcohol. All right, the inhibitors. Now, if I give an inhibitor, what is that going to do to the P450? It's going to back it up a little bit. So I'm going to have higher levels of that medication. They're going to be not as quickly metabolized. It's going to inhibit the metab metabolization of, these, of the me medications. So the inhibitor inhibitors... This is going to be be your magic racks, okay? And there's different acronyms or whatever you want to call them uh, out there, but this is just the one that I use. And of course, we have the macrolides, and it's not all macrolides; it's some of them. And that's where I had a question before, and then I took it down because I didn't think it would have been a been a fair one. Uh, amiodarone uh, is what I have, and I see somehow this could be on kind of both. It grapefruit juice, isoniazid, cimetidine. Ritonavir, acute alcohol, ciprofloxacin, ketoconazole, and uh, sulfonamides. Okay, those are your inhibitors. All right, we got the inducers and inhibitors. You have to know them flat out. Um, so back to this question. We have someone on warfarin, okay? Uh, and kind of the, for someone who's got AFib, the, the normal warfarin range, you know, when they get this check should be between, say, two and three. Now, they could easily put that in the question and say uh, the warfarin range was either elevated or decreased, and then which of the following medications may have caused that. So if the warfarin, if the, P, if the INR goes up, okay, PTINR, if the INR goes up, if the normal range is two to three and it, be, and it goes to five, say, what do you think happened? Was there more warfarin laying, laying around or was there less? Well, if, because this is like the, you know, the, is the bleeding time uh, per se. So it, in, it, it, until it clots. So 
it's going to be longer, so it'd be the blood would be thinner. So that would, that would have meant there's more warfarin kind of lingering around. So that would give me the belief that there was an inhibitor given to somebody. Now we don't, we don't even go there with this the, with the with those numbers. Okay, we just know that this guy uh, had a stroke and he was given cipro. Okay, ciprofloxacin. So if he's on warfarin and given cipro, is it an inducer or an inhibitor? Well, just from this, it's an inhibitor. So the guy's given Cipro. What's going to happen to my warfarin levels if he's given an inhibitor of the P450? The warfarin levels are going to go up. Okay? So that's going to increase my risk of bleeding, right? Blood thinner, etc. Uh, so it's going to increase in bleeding. So is that going to call would that so now you think is would that cause a hemorrhagic stroke or an ischemic stroke? If I have increased bleeding, if, if, if anything, you know, if a person bumps their head or they have more bruising or something, it's going to be, it's going to cause more of a hemorrhagic. So extremic stroke, probably not on my, you know, it's not where I'm really leaning. There's got to be a better answer than that, okay? Now, if they would have gave an inducer and then the warfarin levels drop because it's getting processed too much, like you're taking a very, very, very low dose, then I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe this guy threw a clot somewhere in there. Uh, but in this situation, Cipro is going to be an inhibitor or any inhibitor is going to increase warfarin levels, increase bleeding. Therefore, I'm putting myself at risk for a hemorrhagic stroke. Okay? So, but let's look at the answer choices. Is it A, ciprofloxacin levels increase due to warfarin interaction? Okay. You know, we can jump in the weeds on this, but the question says, which of the following would most likely explain the patient's symptoms? And I don't think having more ciprofloxacin is going to cause these symptoms. Okay? I'm just not, just not going there. Is it ischemic stroke due to warfarin levels decreasing? Well, the warfarin levels didn't decrease. They would have went up with an inhibitor. Um, so I, I kind of like that in, in the sense if it was the opposite, but not for this question in particular. Is it hemorrhagic stroke due to the increased levels of warfarin? I'm liking it. Is it ischemic stroke? We already talked about not that one. Is it lower PTINR? Well, a lower would mean that the blood was thicker and it would and then it would have been like a lower warfarin levels causing that. But this is increased level of warfarin. Therefore, my INR, and I always think the higher the number, it's like the higher in the sky where the, the air is thinner, okay? And uh, just like the blood, it's going to take, you know, it's, it's thinner, less. Uh, so it's not lower PTINR. Um, I think we, we would have a higher INR because there's more warfarin around. So the only answer on this one is going to be C, hemorrhagic stroke. Uh, due to increased levels of warfarin. But gee, the, the key take on point, guys, you got to know your inducers and inhibitors cold for step one, step two, and step three. This one reads, a 54-year-old immigrant uh, presents to his primary care for depression. He has been treated with phenylzine for years back in his home country. You discuss switching to sertraline. You discuss with patient the need to delay the start of new medication for several weeks after discontinuing his current medication. Which of the following reasons justifies this gap in care? Is it A, potential excess of dopamine from drug interaction? Is it B, impairment of dopamine decarboxylase resulting in excess dopamine? Is it C, risk of serotonin syndrome? Is it D, risk of neuromalignant syndrome? Is it E, excess anticholinergic symptoms? This is really just testing your knowledge of mechanism of action of the medications that, that, he's, that we're talking about here. Now we know the sertraline is an SSRI, which deals with what? Serotonin. Now, phenylzine, this is this one that's kind of the, uh, you know, you have to really put your uh, knowledge thing to work. So phenylzine is an MAO, okay? And you always hear, oh my gosh, MAOs don't prescribe, them. well, we don't prescribe much anymore because there's better options out there, okay? But still you might see people on these if they came from, you know, somewhere else per se where it's more, maybe more common. But when we think the MAOs, we have the MAOB, uh, and well, I'm just going to go selective, okay? And then we're going to have the MAOAB, and these are going to be the non-selective medications. Now, with the MAOs, you always think, you know, and I know we, we stress this a lot, but remember, phenylalanine makes tyrosine, which makes L-dopa, which makes dopamine, which makes uh, norepinephrine makes, makes, makes epinephrine. Um, so we have to know 
that these MAOs, and I always say MAO B comes first, and then MAO A, is we got to know the, the medications. Now, as far as MAO Bs, these are very selective right here. So if I have an MAO B inhibitor, okay, which, is, which are the medications, they're MAO inhibitors, if I inhibit this guy, what am I going to have more of? Dopamine, okay? And this is, and so these are going to be my uh, selegiline, rusalgiline, okay? And they only impact the MAOB. And so, you know, this is, this is like our Parkinson's, right? Because in Parkinson's, we want to have more dopamine around. Uh, so these are MA, MAOB. Now, the non selective, they work on MAOA and MA. O, B. And then if I inhibit these guys, what am I going to have more of? Well, I'm going to have more of dopamine. I'm going to have more of norepinephrine and serotonin. Okay. So, and what are these medications? Well, you have the isocarboxide, -carbo carboxide. We have phenylzine. Okay. Our guy right here, phenylzine and tran cyclostranol, cipromine. Um, anyways, long story short, phenylzine, they like to test on that one, but you got into the isocarboxide and the transcyclamine. Um, but they're going to increase dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. Why? Because they're non-selective. They're going to increase, increase, and serotonin. So what's the issue with this guy? Well, the thing is, if you inhibit these MAOs, right, you need time for these things to regenerate after you stop the phenylzine because you don't want to just start somebody right back on a new medication because they don't they won't be able to break you know they won't be able to break it break it down per se and so what am i going to have more of i am at risk for having too much serotonin from my zola from my citrulline coming in the coming in the door and i'm probably going to have excess serotonin because i haven't had a chance my mao um, a per se, to, to go ahead and regenerate, uh, to recruit from the discontinuation of that medication, the, the, the phenylzine. So in this situation, is it A, potential excess of dopamine? No, be, you know, I, I get there's going to be excess phenylzine, dopamine a little bit from the phenylzine, but adding Zoloft's not going to, uh, sertraline's not going to cause that. So no, it has nothing to do with dopamine. We're looking at serotonin here. Impairment of dopamine decarboxylase? No, no. Um, it's just not even associated. Risk of serotonin syndrome, potentially. Risk of NMS, nope, that deals with the dopamine blockade. Uh, and then excess anticholinergic, uh, it's not really what I'm really at risk for when I com combine those medications. When I when you see phenylzine or any of these MAOB, MAO non-selective, which is basically just think of these three, you got to delay starting a new medication to give uh, to give these guys time basically re rejuvenate themselves, okay? So the correct answer, the only answer is gonna be C, risk of serotonin syndrome. Hope it was helpful, guys. Mm -hmm.